Hey guys and welcome back to my let's play of The Simpsons Hit and Run for the PlayStation 2. Last time, well we looked all around the rather destroyed Springfield, we fade our time trial race thanks to Marge's wonderful driving which is mostly on my part. And now we're stood outside of the burnt down church where we have a zombie outside and this will be our circuit race. Which despite the fact uh, we're here, not by the school, where the uh, checkpoint zombie race is. This one does actually take us by the school. If I win this, you have to promise not to eat my brains. No. Deal. No. Deal. Hey, come on, it's Homer Simpson. I doubt there's even much in the way of a brain to actually eat. This is the guy that decided to show that he's smart. He set fire to like his certificate for some sort of a comp school ac accomplishment causing him to set fire to his entire house without him realizing he's going I am the smart I am the smart hey it's me I thought it was a black car that I went up against it turns out it's a hearse we're actually going up against the police but surprisingly it's the boat that's in the lead Yeah, uh, the, I think I mentioned this in another part and got distracted by something, but when uh, Dan, Dan C, that's what I'm going to call him, when Dan C said, started singing SMRT, I mean SMART, that was actually a error that he made whilst recording the line that wasn't actually supposed to be in the song, but I guess they thought it was so good that they decided to keep it in. That's one thing that he claims he does when he is voicing Homer. He has to switch off his brain. Not really sure what he means by that, but he has to pretty much dumb himself down so that he can prepare himself for Homer. I don't know about any of the other characters he voices, but that's what he does for Homer. But this guy really likes driving into walls. Uh, three laps is probably our... Uh, I know our Pooh's circuit race is pretty big as well. I'm not sure why they give us all that room at the back to uh, there though. Why can't we just turn around there? You know, you do like a handbrake turn. Which is what I just did. And that building is a pumpkin. I don't know what that building was. So it was never a building of much significance. I always love it when like a, a sh the actors in a show make a mistake and then they decide to keep the mistake in it just for <laughs> in the uh, final cut just because they it just seems to add to the comedy yeah there, there are a number of sitcoms that do that they leave in the mistake and you know it works it makes you laugh I can think of a few occasions where we've had things like they say the wrong word, or in some cases, in some cases, some part of the uh, film crew messes up. I, I don't. There, we have a, sh uh, a sitcom here in the UK. I don't watch it myself. It's called Mrs. Brown's Boys, a very popular sitcom with viewers, less so with the critics, who call it one of Britain's worst sitcoms. I mean, it is mostly just a guy in drag who uh, says he has to uh, say the F word in every sentence only with an E sounding because he's Irish. But uh, they, they, one thing that they do do quite a few times whenever I have caught the show, often because I'm turning something else off and that just happens to be what's on at the time, is that they, keep, they seem to make quite a few mistakes that they leave in. There was one point where the camera the cameraman accidentally smashed through the uh, the window that was part of the stage and uh, that that was the best one I think there was one where uh, the guy playing Mrs. Brown I don't remember his name Brendan O something uh, he accidentally said the word gonorrhea when he was meant to say something completely different that was supposed to be when the guy she was talk he was talking to was very upset he wasn't upset for very long when he said that and then some guy in this some guy in the film crew accidentally left his phone behind on the set which started ringing when they thought it was supposed to be the phone for the actual episode. 
But I love it when sitcoms do stuff like that. And many of them we just don't get enough. I want to see it happen on the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory is getting a bit too repetitive for my liking. There's part of me that actually wants it to end after this season. Because I feel it's gone on a little bit too long now. With nothing really interesting happening. I mean, I'm interested in seeing where... Uh, well, I'm not going to spoil this one, but I'm interested in seeing where one particular change might happen involving a new character. Though if the promotional picture is anything to go by, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like it's going very fast. It looks like it's actually pulling a Bonnie from Family Guy. Let that be your clue. But it all, none of it started with a big bang, I assure you. But anyway, that's enough about various live action sitcoms. Let's get back to the animated sitcom that is The Simpsons. So I did say earlier that I thought that uh, The Simpsons, Trials of Horror episodes, like the regular episodes, have seen quite a decline in quality, and I just find it more apparent here. Probably just because there's less of them. Like, the first, like, 11 or so Trias of Horrors are great. I love them. But after that you really start to notice how they begin to drop. At first it's only like one part out of three and then that will, that just gets bigger and bigger to the point where it's like, by the way that zombie I just passed there, that one just over there, that's the that's where he's supposed to be, the one that serves you the zombie car. No, he needs to be at the back of the... which end do I need to be at? Okay, we've got some tricky platforming here. Jump on the coffins. This one's moving. But, um, you know, there were still a few after Treehouse of Horror 11, which I did still enjoy. Because... It always brings me up on the other side. Uh, I enjoyed the one where Homer has to become the Grim Reaper. But I kind of I clipped through the ground. I kind of feel there wasn't enough to it. And uh, th there are there are still some good ones. But there were still some good ones. I don't think so anymore. Because I honestly thought it was enough when I when we had an episode where Homer's paralyzed by getting bitten by a black widow spider. For his only form of communication is farting. That, I think, is where it crosses the line. That's not Family Guy. Th sorry, that's not The Simpsons. That is Family Guy. We've got our hell to pay. From uh, Trials of Horror 9. But, uh, it was that, that, that really crosses the line for me. You know, I'm watching The Simpsons, I'm not watching Family Guy. I, mean, I don't mind it every now and then in The Simpsons. Oh, we've got one character who uh, burps all the time. We've got Barney. But I don't want to have an episode that's based around farting. Especially for something as stupid as it's a means of communication when you're paralyzed. You know, that was just... That one was bad. That one was really bad. Now some of the more modern version, some of the most modern Trials of Horrors have actually been pretty decent. You know, we recently had one where Sideshow Bob act, uh, he successfully killed Bart, but then he got bored afterwards, so he created a machine that right, was capable of bringing Bart back to life just so he can kill him again. Yeah, you know, that that one was okay. But, they seem to be getting better, but there's there's just been so many bad ones. Yeah, you know, they they used to be both funny, but they still had a sense of creepiness to them. Now they're just trying to make you laugh too hard whilst having some blood and guts here and there. Yeah, uh, those I just don't enjoy. The, the originals, however, they come in the form of our collector cards. 
They're all great. All the ones that were out at this point were great. My favourite being Treehouse of Horror 5 from Season 6. That is one of my all-time favourite Simpsons episodes. I really love Treehouse of Horror 6 as well. Treehouse of Horror 5, you know, it's not exactly uh, Cape Fear, which is still my favourite episode of all, but... Tri uh, Treehouse of Horror 5 was just a great one. You know, the first part was great, where um, you think I'd remember what it was, uh, when uh, the shinning. That one was great, I love... I forget the name of the part, but where... With our toaster, our time-travelling toaster. I love that one. This is a tricky jump, that the camera does not want to work with me at all. Leap of faith, or my double jump can just not work. Come on, wasp. Where's the wasp? I can't hit you over there, or up there. Oh, you're gonna make a leap of faith and grab the collector card and kick the wasp. I don't wanna do that. I, I wanna kick the baby. But sadly, this is the wrong show. Huh. Well, we got a shield down. Oh, now he comes down. <laughs> we had to collect the collector card first. Hey! At the very least, it can't move when they try and sting you from the looks of it. Right, and I believe that's pretty much everything now. We still have one collector card, but I'm just going to save that because we need to get that one for plot. We need to head in the area where the collector card is for plot reasons anyway. So I'm just going to get it then. So for now, let's try this time trial again. And there's another UFO stuck in the uh, power plant. Let's just check our level progression. We've still got three more wasps to find. That's interesting. In that case, forget the uh, time trial race. And let's bring out the fastest car in the game. The Open Wheel Racer. Highest speed, highest acceleration. Pretty fast turner though, so you got to prepare yourself for that, because it is a Formula 1 car. But it's very weak. So you got to be aware of that. Now where are the last three wasps? The other world's largest tweeter. When it comes to uh, Trials of Horrors, you know, besides the likes of Trials of Horror 5, where we have the Shinning, the second one, which the collector card will tell us what it is. It won't do it won't just say the trials of horror number, it does actually tell you what part it's from. And we have the Nightmare Cafeteria, which isn't quite as good, but still good. But I love the likes of the episode where Ned Flanders turns into a werewolf from Trials of Horror 10. Uh, Trials of Horror 7. You know, season, yeah, this thing is covered in blood now. Trials of uh, Season 8 is my favourite episode of the Sim. The, the my favourite season of The Simpsons, along with Season 6, where funnily enough, Trials of Horror 5 is from. But um, I love that Trials of Horror as well. You know, we've got the Thing and I. And we've already seen our costume for that. We've got a uh, Bart Hugo, which is odd because Hugo is a different character. I mean, you don't. F somehow they forgot about that, which is weird because I thought you don't forget a thing like Siamese twins. And then we had uh, the Genesis tub, whatever it was. Lisa makes like a her own life forms inside that bowl. That that one was okay, but it wasn't much. And then we had Citizen Kang. Which I love for one wor for one line and one line only. Well, not the one line only, but I love 
for one line in particular. My name is Kang. This is my sister, Kodos. Hello? And that was how I found out that Kodos was a female. Although apparently in earlier episodes he is established to be a male. There was one, I think it was one of the Simpsons' many Butterfinger adverts where he was also referred to as by Kang his sister. And then more recently they've actually been classified as a lesbian couple rather than being siblings which would mean that uh, Kang is also a female so they're, they're all over the place of what exactly Kang and Kodos are and how they're related and, and what gender they are. But it's entertaining to say the least. But I like Hell to Pay, I like The Devil and Homer Simpson. I like Hungry Are the Damned, our first Kang and Curtis episode. And I'm wasting my time. I'm gonna cut. <laughs> I can go on about this. I'm just gonna cut back to uh, when I find those last few wasp campers. They might be at the power plants. Okay, so despite what I said, this is going to bother me, so I'm actually going to uh, climb up to Mr. Burns' office. So this is all we can do when we go inside the power plant. We've we got, one, got one wasp camera over here. So that's two. So do we have two on our way up to Burns' office? So another level seven exclusive. So this section has been knocked down because conveniently that UFO has uh, crash landed and caused all of this to appear. Even Mr. Burns has a load of uh, Buzz Cola stuff all around the power plant. They really are everywhere. I don't care, the police can't get me up here. And in order to get to the office, we actually do need to climb up the UFO. Which is slippery, you can't set foot on the UFO itself. So this part's a bit difficult, because the camera doesn't really work with you here. And then that happens. You gotta sort of hook and get back up, but no. And if you fall off, you gotta climb all the way back up again. So you want to try not to fail too much. These bits of glass are also slippery. You can't stand on them. And uh, it's kind of annoying. But that part's not so bad. But when you're actually on the UFO and you got to climb all the way back up again. And a lot of it is simply because the camera angle is pretty bad. Like this is, uh, I can move it left and right. I cannot move it up and down. I can do that, but it's not, it doesn't really help me there. Ah! We're the highlights in your hairdo The extra arms on Vishnu So don't take up We won't take up Yes, let's be the In Springfield Alright, finally up that thing is that UFO is not a super fun happy slide. Right. Okay, so these things are trapdoors. <laughs> and they send you back to that tube that will always send you to the beginning of that. Unfortunately, it makes collecting some of the it makes collecting the glider card a bit, a bit difficult. You can't really tell what's a trapdoor. Yeah, I can't tell. It looks like the ground gets a bit brighter there. I don't know if this is all trapdoors. Ah. Yeah, like, I can't tell there what's a trapdoor and what isn't. Oh! The thing I haven't even opened yet. Well, at least the pipe doesn't take us to India. Smithers, where does that pipe lead? I don't know, Sarah was here when we moved in. 
Yeah, we can actually explore Mr. Burns' office. It turns out where we were in level 4 wasn't actually Burns' office. It was just part of his mansion. Look, this is all trapdoors. Burns, how paranoid are you? We finally got it. We got our smart calendar. We got a new bonus track unlocked. And it means that now we can return to level 3. And we can grab our ticket to the Itchy and Scratchy movie. A complete set of collector cards. Let's see what our final, co what our final collection brings in store. First, the soul donut from The Devil and Homer Simpson. That's Treehouse of Horror 4. When Homer runs out of donuts at work, he sells his soul to the Devil Flanders for a tasty donut. Always the one you least expect. Smithers, who's that goat legged fellow? I like the cut of his jib. Uh, Prince of Darkness, sir. He's your 11 o'clock. Oh, it's more than the level. You are not smarter than me. I'll see you in hell yet, Homer Simpson. The Crusty Doll from Clan Without Pity, Treehouse of Horror 3. This talking doll was bent on murdering Homer until the repairman was called in to set its switch from good instead of evil. Though it's apparently still evil. The doll's trying to kill me. And the toaster's been laughing at me. Ah, that's all. The Human Cookbook from Hungry Are the Damned, Trias of Horror 1. The cookbook used by Kodos, although I'm pretty sure it was the other alien that was using it. Yeah, uh, I forgot what his name was. I'm just, I'm just going to say this. It was the cookbook that was actually used by James Earl Jones to prepare fried shrimp for Lisa, Sloppy Joe's for Bart, pork chops for Homer, and radish rosettes for Marge. Right, Maggie? You speak English. I am actually speaking Rigelian. By an astonishing coincidence, both of our languages are exactly the same. How convenient. It's apparently they're from Rigel 7, I believe it is. The Time Travel Toaster from Time and Punishment, Trias of Horror 5. Homer accidentally turned his toaster into a time machine, thus doing irreversible harm to the space-time continuum and including one of the greatest lines ever in Simpsons history. You're still not in your own world, Homer. I can get you back. But you have to do it exactly as I... Ah! Ah! Oh. This is indeed a disturbing universe. Ah! Oh. I can gush over that just by... Just by copying it. Hell to pay from... Exactly that. Trials of Horror 9. After Snake's execution, his body was carved up for organs and Homer got Snake's hair transplanted onto his head by Dr. Nick. Then digs into his brain and is apparently sentient. Of course, the transplant somehow snakes hair must be controlling. Oh, please, Lisa, everyone's already figured that out. Hey, the thing's swearing at me. The monkey's paw, which is swearing at me. <laughs> but Lisa's nightmare. A cursed monkey's paw sold to Homer by the former president of Algeria. He's a former president? Oh well. That was from Lisa's Nightmare, Trias of Horror 2. Yeah, they just know it's Lisa's Nightmare, Bart's Nightmare, Homer's Nightmare. Come to think of it, the guy that sold me this thing did say the wishes would bring grave misfortune. I thought he was just being colourful. The Smart Calendar. Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace. Trias of Horror 6. Willie died on the 13th hour of the 13th day of the 13th month. Uh? Does that really happen in Nightmare on Elm Street? I've never watched it. Something I need to do. <clears throat> At a PTA meeting in Springfield Elementary, according to the school's calendar, and to Marge. We were there to discuss the misprinted calendars on the school... 
the school had purchased. Lousy smart weather. Ah, the memories they bring back. I need to rewatch some classic Simpsons. Well, there's a lot of stuff I need to rewatch. There's currently one episode of only one, just one episode of Family I, I haven't watched. What am I stood on? I can't actually see where I am. Am I actually still on the metal thing? Right, now I can land on the UFO. Oh, now I can stand on it. Come on, super fun happy slide. Wee! That wasn't that super fun. <gasps> super fun happy slide! No, Dad. Aw. Right, let's give that time trial one last go. Get a better car. Where's my longhorn? We don't care, Apu. Why are you here? Normally, normally you only get these characters when they don't appear in the levels themselves. Apu's in the quickie mark. Yeah, he's driving the car. Does that mean that if I now go into the quickie mark, he'll still be there and apparently he's still running the place despite being in my car? Because that is weird. I do. I, I, I'm still open to a Simpsons movie too. That's something I think we could still have. But I think that we should. Yeah, let, let's end it here. And so, for the final parts. For our last little uh, bonus episode that I plan on doing. For the final part of the main storyline. We're going to be doing all of our missions from beginning to end. So, I will see you guys then. I completely ignored the time trial that I said I was going to do. Why did I do that? Whoops.